This is A game. Fast acting, long lasting, with no side effects. Hey, all my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel, where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimson Eyes, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your host, femininity coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So what we're talking about today is um, Katanji Brown Jackson's uh, inability or refusal to define the word woman when she was asked while they were examining her and questioning her on her nomination to see today could they move forward with her nomination into the SCOTUS seat. So I'm not going to play the video just because YouTube is real iffy sometimes about playing news clips, but I am going to play it and let you hear the audio. OK. And this is Senator Blackburn actually asking Katanji, could she define the word woman? And then you're going to we're going to all just listen to the response. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Now, hopefully you guys were able to hear that the original audio was actually a bit low. So there was nothing that I could do about the original audio. However, hopefully you were able to hear it. I'm going to put the link to that clip in the description box so that you can hear it yourself more clearly. And basically what it was only about a minute or so. And basically Senator Blackburn was asking her uh, to define, simply define the word woman. And then when she refused to, because it wasn't about not being able to, it was about refusing to. Uh, and then she alludes and says, I'm not a biologist. Now here's the thing. And I agree with Senator Blackburn when she says this underscores the dangers of the progressive education that's going on in this country. Um, so she refuses, Katanji refuses to define the word woman. Okay. Then, like I said, she proceeds to say that she isn't a biologist, which actually implies that to, she's acknowledging that to be a woman, one would have to acknowledge the biological truth of sex and gender. Okay. Now, Let's break this down. She's not answering this question, simple question. In her time as a judge, her time as a lawyer, her time in the legal system as a professional in this country, I'm sure that she has had to answer tougher questions than that and had to make tougher decisions than that. But let's, let's talk about it though. This is a woman that's being nominated to the highest court in the land. This is a judge seat that they can't really oust them out of it. Very difficult to get a Supreme Court justice out of the seat. They hold those positions for life or retirement. Okay. So basically they either die and the seat is open or they choose to retire out of the seat and the seat becomes open. Okay. Now she might, she may be called upon to not only comprehend, but to interpret law, right? up to and including the highest law of the land, which would be the Constitution of the United States of America. That's the job of the Supreme Court, okay? 
any ruling that she makes as a Supreme Court justice is likely to set a legal precedent, okay? Once a legal precedent is set at the level of the Supreme Court, every other lesser court in the land is able to utilize that legal precedent to help make decisions on further cases or situations that are similar to, okay? To find out how they should rule in certain cases. So when you get a particularly difficult case uh, for a judge to make a decision on, a lot of times they'll look for whether or not there is a Supreme Court legal precedent that has been set for some similar circumstance or similar case that they can reach to to get some type of guidance to let them know how they should possibly rule. And, and the reason they do that is because the Supreme Court justices are called upon to interpret the Constitution and to rely on the constitution and not make any ruling that is actually unconstitutional. So that is why that legal precedent is utilized by judges of lesser courts to make sure that they are in compliance with the constitution of the United States. So this is a heavy position that this woman is being called and nominated to fill, okay? Now, this person is going to be called to do this in her time of being a Supreme Court justice. But she can't answer the simpler question, what is a woman as she sits there, a biological woman? Now, let's talk about the purpose of refusing to answer the question because she's not unable. She's refusing to define what a woman is. Because her refusal now will give her the wiggle room later to, to then define woman in a way that is vague and is loose and that will be beneficial to whatever ruling coming in the future. Should there come a time to make a ruling that she can be ambiguous about? If she defines it here in this hearing, then she's going to have to stick to that definition later when she's on the seat. So she can't afford to actually be definitive here, which is why she played dumb kitty about it. Well, you know, that's not my job. She basically told the Senator, it's not my job to provide a definition for that word. Yet it'll be your job to provide context and understanding for the constitution as complex as that piece of legality is. Now, this all of this brings me to a different point that you, than you might have been expecting. What is the value of the existence of women if it cannot be defined? What is the value of the existence of women if being a woman cannot even be defined? What is the purpose of feminism to uplift a person that cannot even be properly identified nor definitively identified at all? How does feminism work to uplift women if we don't know what women are? Or if there is no clear definition of what a woman is. See, this proves that feminism worked to make women a non-entity, a useless, worthless thing that only breathes and consumes. It does not contribute to any benefit in the world, has no internal nor inherent value and begs the question of whether or not a woman, quote unquote, should even occupy space or exist at all. It's the ultimate misogyny. 
The same misogyny that feminists squawk about that they're saying is coming from a patriarchy that no longer truly exists culturally in this country. See, when feminism did, does this to women, because notice it didn't do it to what a man, what men can be defined, even down to what men's expectations are biologically, culturally, and environmentally. We can say what a man is. We can say it. Because see, there's no tea party female to male winning men awards. There's no tea party female to male going into male sports and dominating. There's no tea party female to male that's on the cover of some magazine as the sexiest man alive. But there are all of those cases existent for tea parties when it comes to coming into women's arenas. But feminism uplifts you. But feminism and going against the patriarchy uplifts you. Being a womanist, but not being able to define what a woman is, uplifts you. To be sitting somewhere knowing that a woman is biologically a, a human being that has double X chromosomes and female reproductive organs, somehow you got to put that to the back burner and not say that because for whatever reason, that can't be the definition of womanhood. And it has been being degraded all this time. And black women were complicit in the acceptance of being, throwing away their womanhood, celebrating the alphabet community, specifically tea parties, specifically. And ingratiating them into womanhood, but you can't even define womanhood. And you allowed them to say that they were just as much women, even now to the point where tea parties will sit and say they are born women. That they are not, they came out of the womb as a woman. Forget what the genitals said. They came out of the womb as a woman because of how they feel completely erased women right under your nose and you don't even realize it you don't even know it you running around here talking about women are divine goddesses what woman who's a woman see how zaddy put you in a trick bag see how feminism put y'all in a trick bag of 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 complete illogic See how you're put in a system where the spiritual value has no truth? You live in the American nightmare. You are living in a time and in a place where essentially, culturally, and environmentally, women do not exist. But it's National Women's Month one of these months, I'm right. The word misogyny should not even exist now because misogyny is defined as the disdain and the hatred and the discrimination against women. Well, if we can't define what women are, you can't hate them, can you? So there's no such thing as misogyny, is it? So you can't keep claiming people are misogynistic, right? Define woman. They're sitting on a national stage, a simple question, what is a woman? And a woman could not even answer. And this one's being nominated to interpret and make rulings on law that will affect not only the lives and the trajectory of a court case that she's hearing, 
but all the future court cases that that can be used as a precedent for. She'll be in that seat as long as she lives or until she retires. Either way, she'll be an old woman. Making hundreds of rulings, affecting thousands of people's lives. Can't define woman. Not even the Miriam Webster definition of it, just opted out of it completely. And you voted for number 46. And they throw you these little crumbs that are that that are that got little grenades in them to blow up the black community. Sound off in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimson Ice. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.